So, Paul, we just learned a lot about how we can measure properties of, well, anything in space, right? That's right. So we, we now know that if you have something that's opaque, yep. um, it's going to give you a black body spectrum. So it'll be a continuum spread over a whole bunch of wavelengths. Um, but all it tells you is the temperature. And different temperatures will tell you that different shape of that black body. Yes, so saw. if it, it peaks in a shorter wavelength, that tells you it's hotter. Yep. So that's if you get something opaque. If you get something that's transparent and it's hot, it's being zapped somehow, yep. then it will have emission lines. It'll have spikes of particular wavelengths, which we call emission lines. And by looking at what wavelengths they are, we can work out what elements are present and maybe how ionized they are, what energy levels are being jumped between. But when we looked at that black body of the sun, we saw the lines not going up. We saw lines going down. So they're not emission lines. They're Yeah. So there's something else. We've got black body and emission lines. We're going to need one more thing to what are called absorption lines. So here's a spectrum of the sun spread out like it might be from a prism. Yep. And this was noticed by a guy called Fraunhofer back in the early 19th century. And what he saw was these black lines going across it. So instead of seeing just these emitting lights of color that we saw with our previous emission line spectra, we're seeing the absence almost of these colors. Yeah, so it's like a black body, but with bits missing. Yeah. So, you know, like a mouse has been eating at it or moths. So they've, they've eaten bits out of it. <laughs> That's right. And so if you actually plot it in a more conventional spectrum form, this is what happens. And you get the emission, which is more or less a black body peaking down here in yellow light. Yep. But then there are all these things that go down. So these are where these gaps were. Yeah, these are called absorption lines. So emission lines are ones that poke up, absorption, absorption lines are ones that poke down. Like it's absorbing energy, for instance? Yeah, you need there to be a black body spectrum as well to be absorbed. Yep. So, so you still have to have something that is actually there to be absorbed. Yep. So Let's zoom in at this. So, yep. for example, if we zoom in at this range down there, this is what it looks like if you zoom in. But So this looks like the same color of light in reverse as our hydrogen we are looking at. Yeah, it's that wavelength 656.3 that you and I spend too much of our lives studying. That's right, except instead of being emitted, it's being absorbed. Yeah, but you also see there's a whole bunch of other little dips. Which we don't see with hydrogen. Yeah, uh, that's out, out in the red. Um, and you see there's some continuum in between, but then the sudden dips. Yep. If you go, say, down there, a bit There's shorter wavelength, you're now few, getting a few more <laughs> dips all over the place. Yep. And if you go right down to blue wavelengths, it's, it's kind of just a mess, it looks it's like. It's anarchy. Here. Yes. So what's going on here? So what we're looking at is it, so we're kind of getting the reverse of when we get an emission line spectra? Yeah. So. Mission line is when you heated the gas up and then the electrons jumped down the levels yep. and then the process radiated. So maybe now what you've got is instead of having hot gas, you've got cold gas and the radiation is coming from behind it. Ah. And is it absorbing the gas? Yeah, so maybe now, or, let's imagine you've got a black body, something opaque in the background. So a giant torch or star or something here. Giant incandescent light bulb, whatever yep. it might be. And the light from that's going to be at all the wavelengths. Yep. And then it comes to it, it hits something transparent, but which is colder. maybe cooler. Yep. And as it goes in, if the photon has just the right energy, it might knock an electron up a level. So instead of it dropping ah. down from level three to level two, it might have just enough energy to knock it up from so level three to level three. So essentially it's giving its energy to something else. Right, that's right. So what that means is that that particular wavelength now is missing because the photons have just that right energy, come and hit it, ah. and they knock the electrons up a level, and in process they lose it. So the photon's gone, yep. and you've got an electron, lots of energy. <laughs> But then the rest of the light that hasn't given its energy or its electrons just keeps going. That's right. So if it doesn't have the right energy to exactly match one of these jumps, then the photons just go straight through. They can't give up their energy because the electrons can't accept that amount of energy. So it really then depends on both what this is and emitting a light and what this is. That's right. So um, for the case of the sun, what we typically get is you've got the deeper levels of the sun, yep. and that's opaque. Yep. So it's emitting a black body spectrum at about 6,000 degrees. That's right, emitting it in everywhere in all these colors, yep. But the sun, unlike the Earth, doesn't abruptly end at some point. It just gets less and less dense as you go up. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be a cooler level of gas above that, which is still transparent. And as the light goes through this, if it's got exactly the right energy to correspond to the difference between these two of these lines in whatever element it is, yep. it will knock a photon uh, electron up yep. and the photon will be lost. So because this has a lot more energy but it's traveling through something, often it's 
giving or transferring this energy yeah. to the electrons and then we're missing that light that we saw. Yeah. So again, if we have um, hydrogen gas cloud, yep. if the electrons have exactly the wavelength 656 six nanometers, then they can knock an electron up from here to here. So instead of going this way, we're going that way. Yep. So and likewise, all these other wavelengths. So those wavelengths get absorbed, for example, 656 six minus 486, but if there's somewhere in between like 500 nanometers, we don't see it. It will hit the atom. But the electron can't receive that much. It's like it doesn't have the right change to give it a choice of the market. It's, it's just can't give anything, so you just have to let people go. Okay, and so those, that light keeps going. And just as we were looking with the, the giving the energy, the ones that have lots of energy to give will give it to the ones that are willing to receive that energy, let's say. That's right. So now we have our three spectral features. We have black body radiation. Tells us about the temperature if we see all of the color. Yeah, so it comes from opaque things, wide range of wavelengths. We have emission lines, these upward spikes. That's right, and that's from essentially something emitting or transferring this energy. And then we have absorption lines, which are dips, which is where you have a, probably a black body in the background, yep. and the light from that goes through some gas, and bits are lost. And this, these are dependent on what stuff, gas, is essentially present. Yep, that's right. So. This just tells us the temperature, but these ones can, in principle, tell us the chemical composition, how many electrons things have, how ionized they are, what's zapping them. So we can use this kind of combination to determine the properties or really what something is made up of. That's right.